take a look at financial stability uh, within the system. Um, recently, the College of Supervisors of the West African Monetary Zone held the inaugural meeting at the Central Bank of Nigeria in Abuja to fine-tune strategies for cross-border supervision within the sub-region. Joining us now from our studios in Lagos is Dr. Kingsley Mogalu, who's the Deputy Governor of the CBN. Thank you so much for coming through, Deputy Governor. Just tell us a little bit more about the inaugural meeting of the College of Supervisors of the West African Monetary Zone? Well, the meeting was called to um, give effect to the Memorandum of Understanding that was entered into in December 2009 by the central bank governors of the members of the West African Monetary Zone, which is about six or seven countries in the West African sub-region, including Nigeria, uh, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Ghana, uh, Gambia, uh, and one or two other countries. And the whole idea is to coordinate standards uh, for the supervision of banks that are engaged in cross-border mm. banking. Uh, and that's especially important for Nigeria because there mm. are a number of Nigerian banks which have very strong operations across the West African right. um, region, including other parts of Africa as well. All right, what seems to have come out quite strongly is the need to introduce international uh, best uh, practice standards and also come up with a more streamlined approach to risk management. In the words of the governor of the Nigerian CBN, it's important to safeguard the integrity of the banking systems in the region. What measures are going to be taken? Indeed. Um, a number of things uh, we will be doing. We will be coordinating the individual uh, uh, supervisory activities through the College of Supervisors of the central banks uh, of these countries. So individual supervisory practices will be coordinated in this group. There will also be a coordinated look at the risk profile of banks with uh, regional banking presence. Um, and then also the whole question of just, you know, setting standards and, and building trust among supervisors of different countries uh, without, um, um, you know, uh, without prejudice to their sovereignty. All right. As you mentioned, um, it's quite a diverse profile of regional member states, countries like Nigeria, which is the second largest economy in Africa, partnering, as it were, with countries like Guinea, Mali, Sierra Leone. In terms of a common approach, given the varying um, regulatory authorities and experiences that exist in these countries, what sort of measures are going to be taken to come to some sort of cohesion, given the differentials? It's, it's important to state, first of all, that the whole point of the College of Supervisors um, of the central banks of the West African Monetary Zone is not intended to be a decision-making body. It's a coordination body. It does not remove the decision-making powers of individual supervisory authorities in these countries. But what it does is to set standards. And one of the things that we all agree is that in this era of, of global financial movements and global banking activity, it's important to agree on the things that are important when supervising these banks. And one of the most important things is that uh, an approach that looks at risk profiles of the banks is a very important uh, step to take going forward. All right. Now, obviously, Nigeria has had its own torrid experience in the last year with um, the bank bailout, the introduction of an asset management company to soak up toxic loans to try to inject liquidity in the system. We've also seen interventions at the Nigeria Stock Exchange by way of governance. The lessons that Nigeria can impart to some of the members of this college? Many lessons, <laughs> uh, one of which is that corporate governance matters. Um, another lesson is that risk management is vital. The very nature of banking and financial markets carries in them an implicit reality of the possibility of boom and bust cycles. And it's very important to manage this so that it does not create crisis that can damage uh, whole economies in countries or across regions. Uh, so I think uh, the Nigerian lesson is a big lesson for everyone in Africa. And I think we uh, in the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Nigerian government in general and of course operators um, in the banking system and other parts of the financial mm. system uh, are, are changing in ways that make it clear that they recognize these lessons and are now prepared to put them into practice to prevent 
the kind of uh, significant turmoil that we've seen in recent times. And I think even the extent of the interventions of the Nigerian Central Bank has set standards that I right. think are of worldwide application. We've gone to a much farther extent right. than the, the regulatory supervisory authorities of even Western countries uh, like the United States and the UK. Right. Okay, as you're talking about issues around financial stability, some people are looking at this experience and saying, well, this is one dimension of regional integration with an ECOWAS. But interestingly, the process has been very, very slow um, at a macro level and even at a micro level. What other measures need to be taken to just try to get the region working well because for businesses uh, operating in the region, it's a question of repatriating capital from one state to the next, moving labor from one state to the next, and it's going to go just a little beyond um, issues of regulation of financial systems. Indeed. I think there is need for a closer um, coordination of the implementation of the various statements of intention and the various policies that have been taken within the context of ECOWAS at the level of the heads of states, at the level of the ministers of finance and ministers of economy. Um, it's very important that um, benchmarks for implementation be set because several policies have been adopted, but there's need for, I think, uh, stronger attention to monitoring of the performance of the implementation of those policy measures. All right, let's talk about headline news today, Deputy Governor. Um, the establishment of a fund to provide credit to a distressed airline industry and also the power sector. What's informed that decision? What informed it, first of all, is the, is the belief by the Central Bank of Nigeria that one of its functions as a central bank in a developing country is not just to manage um, you know, the interest rates uh, and other instruments of monetary policy, but it is to get the financial system in Nigeria to contribute to the development of the real economy. And this is one of the major, one of the four pillars of the banking reforms that's going on in Nigeria, to ensure that financial intermedi intermediation takes place to support the real economy. In Nigeria, a lot of industries have been closed down in recent years for two main reasons. One of those reasons is the fact that power supply has been increasingly weak yeah. and epileptic. Yeah. The second reason is that there's too much short-term money in the system and not enough long-term money. Right. And so when you consider these two uh, uh, major factors, a lot of fact factories have not been able to cope, mm. and so they've closed down. And this is what informed the central bank's decision to intervene, relying on a section of the, of the act that created uh, the Central right. Bank of Nigeria, the Central Bank Act, that gives the central bank a mandate to uh, launch these types right. of intervention funds to foster economic development. So that's the reason behind the funds. All right, I think many people understand the rationale when it comes to entering the power sector. I mean, it's now the hallmark of uh, President Jonathan's uh, leadership. It's a huge issue. But with regards to the airline industry, it's a bit more sensitive because people say, you know, how it's operated, it hasn't been properly regulated in the past. Many airline operators didn't have licenses, all sorts of issues such as that. So before we begin with credit, we ought to begin with governance of the airline industry. Your view? I think the governance of the airline industry in Nigeria has improved quite significantly. We have uh, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, which I think is increasingly uh, uh, doing, doing very good work. Uh, you might be aware that recently the United States has upgraded uh, its certification of the sa safety standards of Nigerian airlines to category one. And I think that's evidence of the improvements in the governance uh, of the Nigerian airline industry. But what has been lacking for a lot of those uh, airlines is the fact that they've been burdened by loans that have been affected by the uh, uh, distortions in the financial system. Very short-term money, uh, the margins of profit in the airline industry are not very big, and so they've been struggling under the weight of these loans. And that's why, uh, and we know, in Nigeria especially, that if the airlines uh, break down, the airline industry breaks down, there will be a serious problem of transportation, there could be loss of lives because mm. airlines may be tempted to engage in cost-cutting measures mm. that may affect the safety of passengers. And so it's a very strategic industry and that's why it was included in, in the interventions of the central bank. And the whole point is to give these airline companies, as with the power companies, access to long-term money right. for 10 to 15 years at interest rates of not more than 7%.